you know, gentrification is something that us as a black community community should be paying attention a lot more than we should be. Don't get me wrong. There's a few of us definitely known for a while. I definitely witnessed it myself first time in the 90s when I was a teenager. And that happened during the Clinton administration. A lot of, a lot of places got tore down during that time. And we built up to condos. Heck, you can go to Norfolk, Virginia and see most of that happened. Even my city, Newport News. You can see all this occur. And also all over, all over America and other parts of the world. So but gentrification has always been something that has affected us African Americans. Especially because without ownership and resor- having ownership and resources is why. Now, what I find very interesting is the ones who benefit from gentrification for those who actually have ownership of something. Or they have their stake, they have their quote unquote stake, they plant their flag or put their stake into something. Case in point, in most, neighbor- most black neighborhoods, every time you go to a corner, in the corner store, like, I'm sorry, keep my mind, I'm originally from. From up north, so corner store and corner store, and we'll get to the rest of that later. But pretty much in a nutshell, we don't the ones that benefit because we don't own the store. It's always other immigrants coming from other countries that come into our neighborhoods, profit off of us, leave, not give anything back, leave, and say fuck all of you. And you know that never that always sat well with me. The fact there was one there's one particular place in my city um, that used to have, they used to have the store. It, it was a flea market. It's essentially called a. It was a flea market and it had different numerous stores. It was called Peddler's Village, by the way. For those who in my area, they pretty much know what place I'm talking about. If they know, if you know, you know. And there's different stores. There's a couple black-owned businesses that was in there, and that was pretty good. And I always made it a point to support them, whether it be just some T-shirts to buy mixtapes, this, that, and the fourth. Did it? The place where I live at didn't have actual. Like food and stuff in there, not in that particular one, even though there's other places. But there was always this one particular store. There's always this one particular store that was part of that market, and it was owned by Asians. I made it a point never to go in there, never even went in there to buy a do rag. This is back then, was just a teenager. Never even went in so much as far as to buy a do rag. And the reason for it because I remember watching how that particular Asian family used to treat black people that came in the store, even though they're in our in the neighborhood, making this kind of making the money. Profiting off of black people, the black dollars, shit on them every chance to get, and they have a disdain for them because they feel like their their status should be higher. They want to be the very wings of the world, or they want to be I, I don't know whatever you know whatever Chinese per, Chinese or Asian person you can think of. They feel like the status low, so they already have this discontent for it for you already. It was about I watched how it was treated. So I always made a point never ever to go in that store whatsoever. And that's just how it was. But you're probably wondering where I'm going with all this. And I find this to be very interesting because, as I say before, it's always the immigrants and people coming to our neighborhoods that are the ones that are um, benefiting. Now, think, now what's happening today, and I saw it on Twitter, which I thought was not only it is, it is it's actually hilarious a sense of irony in itself so we'll go ahead and jump into the whole topic right now and what it is is what's going on there's a there's a company there's a startup out of silicon valley from what i saw in the picture which you'll probably see on the screen right here shows a picture of a white guy and i think the other person is an eastern indian they came up with a concept and i use the term loosely because i don't find anything revolutionary about this concept they basically came up with a, a vending machine that you can stick in apartment buildings, apartment buildings, or gym or small time gyms or small based businesses in cities. Now get get a load of this. What they call it? They call this bodega cat. <laughs> you probably wonder why am I laughing? For those for those who are up north, like I'm originally from, for those who are up north, you pretty much know the bodega is a corner store. That's pretty much what it is. Or for my Detroit guys, y'all call them party stores for those for my Detroit heads in there out here listening that's pretty much the essence it is and it guess ties back to what I was speaking about earlier the people who own these stores are pretty who run these stores are pretty much either immigrants it's very rare there's a black person who owns this corner store and you know it's gotten less and less throughout the decades that actually own the corner stores or convenience stores in the, in the area as a matter of fact in that particular community here's why I find this is why I find this funny because now because most of these immigrants, again, who shit on black people who don't even want them in the stores to begin with, they're not going to feel the effects of this now. They figure, gentr- they figure because gentrification, they they said to themselves, you know, most of these black people I'm going for to stay, they're going to get kicked out of here. 
you know, the other communities are going to move in. And now we'll have our, we have our foothold here. Now we're going to come in our stores. They're going to freaking our, our patronize our business. And we're going to be the ones to reap the benefits. Uh-uh, not anymore. Because now, thanks to this machine, this thing called Bodega Cat, which let me just say what it is. It's pretty much basically a vending machine. That's, that's pretty much it. A little square vending machine. Not even a tall vending machine like you have soda can like you have sodas and chips. Just a regular the size like a little dresser. Basically the size of a dresser. It's a vending machine called Bodega Cat. Pretty much a nutshell. Now, like I said, there's nothing to me revolutionary about a freaking vending machine. A fucking vending machine. There's nothing revolutionary about it. Except when I thought about it, I looked at the scalability and I said to myself, you know what? This is this is pretty much this could be very scalable. As a matter of fact, the company's already raised 2.5 million dollars, <laughs> which is hilarious. And pretty much Twitter went went amok and went crazy. They were pretty much upset. I will. I really wish I could find the tweets that are by um, some of these corner store owners. Like I said, they figured they're gonna be the ones who reap the benefits of gentrification. Now, then themselves are probably gonna be pushed out. Cause think about it. With gentrification comes a whole bunch of new bra buildings. Matter of fact, as I'm looking across from me right now, I'm outside on this beautiful day. I'm looking at these condominiums that just got built here, which this was all woods. This was all woods a couple of five years ago. It's now condominiums and they're building a, a crunch fitness. They're building a crunch fitness, a one life fitness here. And this Whole Foods already area in the five below and so on and so forth. Very nice area. But like I said, these, and I'm using this as a purpose here because it's condominiums. They could be the first ones to benefit. They can sit here and have these vending machines or quote unquote little bodegas inside their apartment buildings. That could shut other stores down. Now the area I'm in right now, I'm looking at right now, won't do that because there's grocery stores and other stores around here and eateries. So that won't happen. But think about the other communities that are being gentrified, especially D.C., Baltimore, certain parts of my area, Hampton Roads, Seven Cities, certain parts of my area. Cali, which has been going on, Houston, which is now, considering what's happened with the flood, with Hurricane Harvey, it's going to be a lot of property getting snatched up for grabs on the cheap. This is like Christmas morning for gentrifiers. It's Christmas morning for them in Houston. So, there, that's that situation there. Now, I find it hilarious, personally, because, like I said, they're not going to be the ones, they thought they were going to benefit all the gentrification. Now, they themselves might be gentrified themselves. Now, as much as I want to feel bad for them, again, it goes back to what I'm saying. Most of these places, if not all, maybe some, we'll say some, didn't even want people of our ilk, and by our ilk, I mean our skin color, black, people in mostly patronizing stores, even though they're in our community, making money and not giving anything back, not even so much as probably even offering some people jobs. Not to say that there's not some that doesn't offer jobs, but they're not going to pay enough. They're going to worry about their families first, which that's the purpose of a business. Your boss, if you own a business, your boss is your family. That's supposed to be your number one priority. But I digress. Just seeing this fact, it's just hilarious to me. Now, they themselves can now be affected by gentrification. Like I said, on Twitter, people were upset and went crazy. Even one post even one post on Twitter went so far as to say, I'm surprised Bodega Cat this is just called this vending machine the gentrification box. <laughs> Which I just thought was, was a perfect title. Now, as much as I want to feel, like I said, as much as I want to feel bad, for some of these corner stores who have that mindset, we can come in your communities and take over, not give a damn about you. I, I don't feel this. I, I'm going to go with the words that I read in the sheet. You know, there's a term called H-Y-O-N, and that stands for hold your own nuts. Now, I feel bad if it's actually a black-owned store that has to go through this and feels it. I definitely feel bad for them. I definitely feel bad for that situation. But, as far, but like I said, in New York, most of the bodegas are owned by other communities. So, I would say Greek Town and Detroit would probably be in trouble, but we can't really say that because they pretty much own everything. The Greek Town Casino, the Creamery, Jason mentioned about some ice cream store out there, Cold Stone Creamery, I think. If you're up in Detroit, let me know if that was what it's called in Greek Town. Let me know. But Jason Black talked about that a lot, especially in the film Gentrification, which is a very good film if you never watched it by the Black Authority, Jason Black. I definitely, I highly recommend that you watch the film. But... Now they're going to feel the pressure and they're going to feel the heat. And the real winners out of it is going to be the person, the people who started the business, the, the investors who raised the startup capital for the business, you know, with the seed rounds. And the people who actually own numerous properties, who actually own properties, not leasing them, but owning them. Because like I said, most corner stores or bodegas, even though it may be their business, they don't own the building, much less own the land around it. 
That's how it normally works. That's how it normally works. But I, I, like I said, they got to hold their own nuts on this. Let's see what they're gonna do. Let's see what the outrage is gonna happen. And I'm just looking at it, not feeling sorry because that's like I said, we have our own issues. We need to get so we need to be getting our ownership on to make sure things like that doesn't happen. Like I said, with technology, with technology, things things are gonna get crazy. It's gonna be a lot of businesses are gonna be getting shut down. A lot of shifts are happening. The shifts have already been happening for the past ten years now. I think when tw- when the twenties hit, and I'm gonna call it the new, and I'm quoting the phrase myself, I'm gonna call it the new roaring twenties. Things are really gonna go full speed. It's gonna be the it's gonna the gentrification train is gonna be a full speed ahead. But I figured it was very important for y'all to see what was going on, and you can see and you can see and now how they were now affected. Everybody wants to support white supremacy until it affects them. Then they want to cry for wolf. So that's why I say they gotta hold their own nuts on this. But you guys leave your likes and your comments, and I'll get catch y'all in the next video.